What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Effing Growth live stream. I think we're up to episode 122 right now. Uh, today, we're talking about whether or not Webflow is the right solution for your next website design project. We're going to compare CMS. We hear a lot of stuff. We talked about front end as a service last week. We talked about like headless CMSs and people always mention WordPress and uh, Squarespace. And there's some more obscure options that are even in the competition here that we're going to look at and just take a look and see like where does Webflow stack up and really where do we see the growth over the next few years? Because I think that's the big takeaway at the end of the episode here. But before we get too far into this thing, let's have and grow. <laughs> Okay, what's up, Joe? What's up? What's up? How you doing? Woo -woo. We got the squad today. Hello. <laughs> any any first thoughts before we say hello to uh, some of the folks here? I'm seeing a lot of hellos. I think people are catching on that we say hello back That's in right. the beginning of the stream. I'm just scrolling through everything, and it's <laughs> hello, hello. How you doing? Hi. <laughs> So let's get into that. Yeah, and Nick Jones is a great 30 minutes late or 30 minutes early. You're right on time. Uh, Zach is here, too legit to quit. Samet is saying, Joe, I'm waiting for your tool. I'm not sure what he's talking about there. Um, I don't know, maybe he's talking about the band. He's waiting for Joe to... <laughs> <laughs> Rahul's in the house. What's up, Greg Dolan? Tony Seats is here. Tyler Huey, what's up? Um, we'll talk a little about Webflow Party. They're up there and doing some cool stuff. Christopher Coleman's here. Maria, hello. While we're waiting, good time to get that like count up. Where are we at? 18 likes. What are y'all doing? Come on, y'all hate us. I know, I know you don't even care about us. That's all it can mean. That's all it can mean, huh, Joe? <laughs> it's exactly what it means. That's it. <laughs> Aditya says, hi, all back from an insanely busy month and several missed episodes. How dare you miss episodes, Aditya? Uh, to Nets here, Tom Vols. What's up from Barcelona? Hello from Los Angeles, says Robert. Aida, that's what we should do. From now on, you have to tell us where you're where you're hitting from. It'd be cool to show mm -hmm. where everyone's at. So Sam Harris in the house, Steve Hilario, John Matias, Dave, what's up? Warda, Gay Perez, hello, Rahandra, Penny. Wow. Okay. There's so many. Christian Smith, uh, Juan, Tom, Philip. I try to catch you all. Lucas, Joel. Okay. What's up? What's up? Okay. Let's get into it. That's enough. That's enough. That's enough. Okay. We could, I literally think we could probably start spending the whole episode doing those, but let's not do that. Um, okay. A quick couple announcements real quick, Joe, and then let's, uh, let's get right into it, right? Sure. Uh, announcement number one, the pro pricing is going up at the end of the month and we are what, about a week and a half away from that. Mm -hmm. So we're going to increase the annual price. It's going from 79 annually up to 99. And then we're also removing the lifetime plan. So if you think that you are going to be using Webflow for more than three years, that lifetime plan makes a lot of sense. You'll be saving money. Yeah. Uh, so well, go ahead and yeah. And that's not to say that six months from now, that $99 doesn't go to $199 or this, that's this, true. this pro plan We're in a year a could be there. right. Yeah. This could be two ninety nine for the pro plan a year from now or two. Like it's so yeah, the, the lifetime you're for sure locking in super value here. Um, and I do expect that price to keep going up, honestly, as we, as we offer more value and figure all that stuff out. So anyway, jump into that. Um, and let's, uh, let's also ahead. talk. Oh, yeah, before this, let's talk about what was released for pros only last week if you mm -hmm. missed it table of contents yep. released for the pros 30 days before yep. everybody else the next thing that will launch will be vertical canvas resizing and vertical canvas resizing will go to the pros first mm. so as you become a pro you just get access to things quicker uh it's we're just going to keep putting value into that package. Yeah, and right now these are, hey, we're gonna give you access for 30 days, but I do see a future where some of these are just, this is gonna be only for pros. 
you know, so I, I do see a time where some things that we release is just going to be available uh, for paid tiers and services that will just be available in that stuff. Um, so anyway, just to show you all some of the stuff that we're doing, uh, the stream is now in your dashboard. The greeting that was in there will show up once along with the greeting. But once that's gone, that's gone. And we'll have kind of the, the, um, the YouTube stream in here. Uh, also, you'll see a little activity feed that we will start populating and maybe if there's enough interest at the end of the show uh, I can show you how we're uh, feeding this because there's a cool little tool that we're building and using that you maybe want to use for something like this you'll also see in the calendar we've color-coded everything and so if it is a fin suite event open to the public that's gonna be in yellow if it's a community event so like this was um, Aaron stream um, or this was our show-and-tell this kind of open again to the public it's in um, green there. And then the blue, if you're a pro, you'll start seeing the blue only events in here. These are the pros only events of which we have our second pro only hangout tomorrow. Um, we're going to kick off the accountability groups. And so if you're hanging with us, you're interested in those accountability groups, there's still time to jump in. Uh, we're going to kick those off tomorrow. We have uh, four groups going so far. It looks like we may open up a fifth. We've also opened up some chat rooms in different places. Flow parents have their own chat room now. We have a GMT plus chat room for folks on the other side of the world so they can kind of coordinate based on their time zones and stuff. So lots of stuff kind of coming in this community that you sh all should um, take a look at um, and then what's the next oh uh, Flochella so if you missed it last week we streamed Flochella the Webflow party folks uh, Melissa Mendez Keith Armstrong put on a great event uh, here in our gather space they're doing it again this Friday um, so last week was Joseph Barry Nicola Miranda and Joe Moore go check out that recording there's like two hours of great talk all about design and then this Friday is Corey Moen Grace Walker and Yusuf, again, going to be another great conversation. Um, I think last week was about kind of this crazy award winning, you know, like kind of cutting edge design. This week's going to be more about production, client focused, um, you know, uh, scaling, scalability kind of design um, stuff. So I think that's going to be a good phase shift. Um, again, Melissa and Keith are doing great stuff in the community. So give them some love on that. And I think that makes our announcements. Do we have anything else that I missed? Nice. I think that's it. Okay, great. Let's get into go right it. Go into the disclaimer. Yeah. Um, send it. So this, this topic talks a lot about other solutions. But of course, we, FinSuite, me, Joe, Rymar, probably a lot of you listening, are thinking that Webflow is the future. So we may be talking more positively about Webflow, uh, but we, we really just want there to be a really nice understanding of the other options out there and how Webflow stacks against them. Yeah, but we're we're still super pro Webflow. That's uh, that's the important disclaimer. Yeah, and I think that goes into the second disclaimer, which is um, I was a WordPress user looking for something like Webflow uh, when I found it. And had I not had my eyes open, I might be one of these WordPress developers or other front end developers that just doesn't see something else coming. And I think it's important for all of us to keep our eyes open. We are all in on Webflow. We do think this is the future and I think we're going to show you this. So uh, TLDW was uh, our version of the too long didn't read, too long didn't watch. Um, we do think Webflow is the future and we think it's the right solution for 80 to 90% of the websites y'all may build over the next couple of years, uh, potentially becoming more. But it is always good to take a look. And so we want to look at the ecosystem. We want to look at the market. We're going to compare some interesting stats. We're going to go through a lot of uh, things that I think will be interesting for uh, folks in the crowd. So um, let's do this just because I see a couple more. Uh, Annalisa is here. Glad to make it to another live. Mozambique is in the house. Her limb, what's up? Uh, Bremen, Germany, Christian Schmidt from the Great White North. Not sure uh, what that is, Pat. Uh, let's see. Um, there was one other one. India. Hello from India. Um, and there was one more first time. There was like a first time streamer. We always like to call it the first time streamer. Oscar. Hello, Oscar. First time streamer. Hello. Hello. Nice. Yeah. Welcome, welcome. To, the, to the streams. Um, OK, so Joe. Oh, do we do the audience prompt? Audience prompt. Yeah. No, let's get to audience prompt. Audience prompt is, what do you see as Webflow's biggest limitation? Especially, when, I think as it relates to the CMSs, I think here, you know, as these competitive yeah. CMSs as we're getting into, that's what we're comparing. Right. 
the reason why you may use one of these competitors that we're talking about is because there is a limitation in Webflow's CMS. So what is that? And when you tell us that, it will help us understand what we can cover in future episodes. If we see a lot of people naming the same limitation, maybe we do a stream about that to discuss how we can approach that limitation. Yeah. Anything to add to that, Reimer? No. Um, and I see a couple people um, saying about that. Uh, let's see. Uh, MKGIN is asking, which main blind spots do we as FinSuite identify as shortcomings? We've built tools for all the ones that we found. And so we keep, you know, like coming up against stuff and finding ways to move forward and grow past that. And so I think our takeaway at the end of this is that right now, the limitations you'll find should only restrict you from doing a very small percentage of the type of websites people build or custom software solutions, right? If you're just building web stuff, marketing stuff, you know, like most of that Almost all of that you can build with Webflow. So I, I don't see a ton of major blind spots there. Um, again, as long as you don't include e-commerce um, and obviously the, the user login stuff right now, which we're hoping that will come. So when we're talking about website stuff, we're talking about usually logged out on the web, you know, flat site, just design kind of stuff. You're not interacting with the data, et cetera. So um, that's kind of what we're talking through here. Um, obviously, with the ability to publish dynamic data, with the ability to create a CMS, a blog, a recipe website, whatever it else you want, and we're going to talk about things. Um, <laughs> a bunch of people are just saying the 10,000 item limit. Yeah. So that's you know, we're... that's not a big one for me. I want the 10,000 to be increased, but we really don't come into that use case many times at FinSuite. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it has happened. We're pitching a project right now that has a serious limitation for that, but usually not. I mean, most marketing sites have less than 10,000 items with all the SEO pages, the blog pages, the everything page. So if you're running into the 10,000 item limit all the time, these are some pretty big sites. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I would be interested to hear who that's asking for a 10,000 item limit actually has a Webflow site that's maxed out yet. You know, um, it seems like a big limitation in, in, but you know, like it takes, unless you have a site with, you know, a couple hundred daily active users, um, the odds of you hitting that 10,000 item limit for just a blog or a, a basic sites, um, again, unless you're pulling in big data sets from other places. And for some reason you want to store that stuff inside of Webflow, which is probably not the right solution anyway. So, um, Vladimir is saying, I would say e-commerce possibilities comparing to WordPress. That's where I think the biggest limitations are, um, is once you get into the authentication, the, the stuff they're working on now, right? The stuff they talk about with the memberships and log login and logic and some of that stuff. I do see that as some of their, um, limitations for sure. Um, this is one that always comes up GDPR compliance for sure. Yeah. The language, you know, uh, translation stuff. Sure. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. limitations in PHP, MySQL. I can understand the structure and manage it with a CMS. I'm looking into a big unknown. Hmm. Yeah. Inability to really control that data. Yeah. A lot of developers say that we have people on our team that also share that where you you know how this data works, you know how the CMS works, you want to interact with it in a certain way and you just can't. Yeah. So yeah, Tom, that's a, that's a clear one. Yeah. Tanette, interesting that you say Moodle here because um, I just came across Moodle as I was doing some research for this episode. I had not heard of that before, but that's a, like mm. an open source LMS platform, a learning management system. Um, so I, I guess that's a, a big tool out there. Um, Rahul is saying the only time I hit a 10,000 item limit wasn't the CMS, but custom codes, character. Oh, okay. Mm. So the custom code never, never maxed yeah. out about it, but I get anxious. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Right. Okay. Now that makes sense. I think that, you know, that, that makes a little bit more sense. You could be anxious about something, but, um, I think the maker pad folks did the same thing. They built out on Webflow and they did eventually run into that as a limitation, but look how big they grew until that became a problem. You know, and now maybe after Zap Your Bottom, they're doing some custom shit or what I don't know, whatever. Um, but yeah, I think you can grow and that's not a real limitation for most people in this audience. Mm -hmm. um, okay, let's do let's do this, Joe. Let's pull up this chart. Let's let's because I was looking at this chart and this had me um, kind of excited to share with the audience here because we talk a lot about and let me zoom in just a little bit here. Um, and so what this is, this is a historical yearly trends in the usage statistics of content management systems. And it starts in January of 2011. 
And what we're looking at here is the percentage of total sites that use a content management system and how that breaks down. Uh, we're not at the point where we have one of those fun waterfall charts where, you know, you see, uh, you know, one company leading and then the next one comes in and then the next one comes in, <laughs> you know, like we don't have that kind of chart built yet. We get we get this. Um, but it's interesting to see here, you know, WordPress is obviously the dominant. This is the elephant in the room. You know, they're growing. But one thing that I noticed that was interesting to me here is that for the first time, they actually shrank, right? This number is not up from where it had been going. So that was an interesting sign to me. Um, this leveling out was interesting to me. So I wonder if like a third of websites is saying don't use a CMS. So does this just mean that, you know, like there's just going to be a percentage of the web that... Um, is never going to migrate or will that number keep going down? And then where I think the competition really starts to get interesting is when you get into Shopify here, now you're into 4%. Wix, you get into 2.3% of the, of the space. Squarespace at 2%, Joomla, Drupal, you know, 1.2 Adobe systems, right? They're coming in now, we're getting into single digits. And where I see the, the huge comp competition, I think over the next few years is really in all these little one percenters. Like who, look at this, forever, you know? And so sure, Webflow is in here, right? They're, they're uh, where were they, number 10? They're right here. And you can see they started in like 2019 with just a little blip on the radar, and now they're up to over uh, a half a percent. This is nice growth, 0.4 to 0.6, and this is, you know, half a year. So I don't know, Joe, thoughts as you see this, does this number become this number in the next few years? Does it go from 0.6% of the market to becoming 2%, 3%, 5% over the next year? Could it ever become 10 or 20% of this market? Um, that's where I think this gets real interesting, right? Does, are we seeing peak WordPress right now at these numbers? Did we just see peak Word, uh, WordPress at 43.2? and now we're on the way down, or is this just a little blip, and by the end of the year, we'll see this be 44, 45, 46%, um, and then, you know, how does the competition break down as we go through these? So, Joe, any thoughts as we look at this chart? Yeah, I'm hoping that the that little 0.3 loss in WordPress was directly related to Webflow's growth <laughs> from the 0.4 to 0.6. That's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> That's it. That they just literally went from WordPress directly to Webflow. That's funny. I don't know. I think, you know, it would be very interesting to see WordPress go down again. I'm not at a point to say that they were at their peak and that that was the peak uh, because it's very impressive growth. You have to say mm -hmm. 2011 to 2022, that's very impressive how it, it continues to increase. Right. So I want to bring up this chart again next year. Yeah. And we have to see, you know, how does that number change? If it continues to go down, I think that's a sign. I think we have to bookmark this and I think we have to watch this a lot. Maybe we're going to be the ones that create that chart that we said, you know, doesn't exist yet. Because, um, yeah, I mean, according to this chart and, and this is tough to say, you know, because this is really like a negligible. This is within the margin yeah. of error here, you know, 0.3 percent. So, um I don't know. I, I think uh, what we had planned to kind of go through is just to look at some of these and maybe not some of these, you know, like Joomla. OK, Drupal, we've talked about those, the WordPress. We've talked about that stuff. But some of these other ones like this Duda is an interesting system. I was looking at that. Um, here's this Moodle that we just talked about. Right. Ghost CMS is a, a headless CMS that we've talked about here. Uh, Zendesk. Look at this. Zendesk websites is now playing in the space at 0.1%. Um, who are these? Like, I've never heard of these, you know, who are these sites? How many of them are like legacy systems? How many of them, uh, some of them are brand new, right? Look at this prom.ua. What is that? And it's just coming onto the system. So this is where, again, I think this competition gets interesting. Let's come back to this view so I can pull my comments up here and let's take a quick look through some of these comments to see if there's anything um, interesting coming in from the folks. Joe, any thoughts just again as, we, as we're uh, looking at that? We have a nice one from Kabarza. There will be serious Webflow clones on WordPress when Webflow hits a few percents. I think that's saying that people will try to copy Webflow once they reach a few mm. percents. Like Webflow is still under the radar for the the bigger systems. It's still a, considered a, a lower player. But when that gets, hopefully, to the three, the four percent, 
people will start to copy Webflow even more, right? Yeah. We already see some some products coming out and like, oh, that kind of looks a little bit like Webflow. That's going to be, I think, much larger once once it increases. So yeah, I agree with this. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I mean, we, we see it all the time. We had that episode and I think we should go back to that, Joe. We did a little bit of that WordPress dive in where we were looking, but we were having the, the computer issues and that was a popular episode. I bet if we did more of that yeah. or if we found, um, like some WordPress folks to come on, um, I actually just talked with a friend of mine who's coming from, uh, Joomla to Webflow. Just, I've been talking to him about Webflow for years. They had been kind of in a system building a really successful business. Um, I think they charge like three to $500, maybe up to $600, maybe a little bit more per month for a website. And you get a new website every 18 months. And it's actually a great business model. Uh, I think he's doing something like 40 or $50,000 a month uh, in reoccurring revenue. Um, really good business for himself. And he's now looking at Webflow, whereas he wasn't a couple years ago because he was kind of set in his ways. And I wonder how many of those types of businesses are gonna be making this shift and looking over to platforms like this. One of the things, one of the observations I was making as I was kind of looking through, I did open up on that chart uh, some of the sites. And I was looking at them and some of them just look like legacy architecture. They look like their competitors to WordPress three to five years ago. You know, they look like at the same time Webflow was trying to build and become what it became. They were also trying to build something that kind of competed with web WordPress. And maybe it does parts of that really well, but it didn't break out like Webflow does. And I just think the, the it's clear skies in front of Webflow right now, especially as we go and look at that chart. And what we'll do here as part of this episode is kind of jump through into some of these platforms and look at what they're offering as it relates to what Webflow is offering and just kind of compare some of that value proposition. And I think we'll see by the end of the episode that there's such a broad gap between what they're offering that some of them for a specific niche, for a specific use case are probably way better for e-commerce, for learning management, for X, Y, or Z, sure. That's where I think those businesses or those platforms will do really well. But for general purpose stuff and for what we talked about last episode, which is that front end as a service, the flexibility to take back ends and plug them into whatever front end you want. Again, that's where I think Webflow wins the game. So any thoughts, Joe, before we move on to the next topic here? Well, I do agree that there will be companies that build a lot of websites switching platforms in the near future. Mm -hmm. So don't only think of it as individual companies saying, I'm making the switch from WordPress to Webflow Correct. or any platform to Webflow. Correct. I'm an agency working in WordPress. I have 120 clients and I want to move all 120 clients to Webflow in the next year. This is something we're now starting to hear. We're actually talking to a company that wants to migrate a lot of financial based websites Yeah, from a whole bunch of different services. WordPress is the base, Yeah, but they want to move all of their clients, everybody to Webflow. Right. And when we start seeing that, that's when we can get to some more exponential looking growth because it's not one website migrating. It's one company deciding to migrate and 120 businesses are now in that trend. Right. Yeah, and Penny's saying here, some of those systems have been around for 15 plus years. Yes, but some of them haven't, you know? And so that's what I that's what I think is interesting is like how much, when people say WordPress powers 50% of the internet, okay, but like how much of that is it in relationship to what people visit right now? <laughs> yeah, that's 100, <laughs> let's go. Uh, okay, so also there's only 41 likes, so I knew you guys hated us. I'm just saying that. Yes, they still hate us, Joe. They still hate us. <laughs> um, okay, so some of those systems have been around for a long time, so some of those are legacy systems. You know, you go to these sites, you stumble into places on the internet, and you're like, oh, what is this? Looks hasn't, but like it hasn't been updated in 10 or 15 years. Well, maybe it hasn't, right? So that's where, again, some of these like mass aggregate stats are impressive, and sometimes it's like, okay, but what is how does that relate to like what we're building is the future of the web because you all know here that the future of the web is beautiful it's snappy it's fast it's responsive it's accessible it's all these things and it's and it's manipulatable by folks like you and i not php developers not theme developers not you know real technically complex hands in the code types of folks so how do these things really compete over the next few years? Are we at the blockbuster about to migrate to Netflix type thing that we talk about? Are we at the BlackBerry iOS moment that we always talk about? Um, 
Joe, any thoughts there? And I see some good comments coming in. We could we could come back and, and hit some of these comments, actually. Yeah, let's hit the comments. What do you got? Um, let's see. E-commerce. There, yeah, people are saying the e-commerce is, is for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, where was it? Waiting for the day Webflow goes public. Yeah, I know. Got to buy those Webflow stocks. Vlad, let me in that IPO, son. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> have we given Framer a go? Seems promising. Joe, have you played with Framer at all? I have not played with Framer. However, I have seen a lot of comments saying Framer is good, but it's not the experience you get in Webflow. That's that's a common recurring comment I hear. Mm. So I don't know. I don't know if that's true, but that's what I think. Yeah, I wonder. I, I, I What I hear is Framer allows you to kind of do a little bit more maybe on the back end stuff. But I don't know that you get the full flexibility. I don't know. I'm just talking on my ass here because I haven't really used it. Mm-hmm. So um, it yeah. is an interesting platform. And that's, again, where if we go back to this chart, look at this, y'all. There's like no shortage of competition in these, you know, 0.1%. And you you never heard of some of these. Maybe one of these is like the next Webflow, the next whatever. I don't know. You know, like we're not going to go through all of them. But Ghost is something I've heard a ton about. And look, there, it's so small. You know, yeah, it's so like when yeah. so when you see this stuff and crafts another one, craft CMS, huge GitHub pages. Look at this GitHub pages is playing. Who says GitHub pages doesn't play a nice little thing? These are uh, Webflow becomes a front end for all of these. I'm telling you, give, I'll put money on it. Webflow becomes a front end for all these. All the, none of these folks are going to build a system better than Webflow for designing front ends. They're just going to build a plugin for Webflow eventually, or whatever that next system becomes. Promise you. Uh, and again, we're betting that that that's Webflow. Um, let's look at these comments, Joe. Any, did you see who's going to who's going to write that bet down? Yeah, we write need, it down. We somebody we out there, somebody write that it. down. Right. Call us out on it next year, two years. I think we need to set an episode where we just come back and look at this chart anyway. We need to just schedule it. Yeah. Like, we'll, we'll schedule episode 280, whatever it is, or 563, which is count however. We got to predict, predict, and we're going to come back and check this chart in a year or two. We should come back and check that chart pretty regularly. It should just become part of our rotation. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I'm a 10 years plus WordPress nerd. This is Jacob saying I'm a 10 years plus WordPress nerd, but switching now to Webflow with a lot of my clients, WordPress just gets worse to maintain. Oh, I got to bring the chat. Yeah. 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 That maintenance, that monthly maintenance that it's like a, it's like a, it's a minefield. Like you're literally, it's a booby trap when you go to update the stuff. Like, am I going to crash everything this time? Did the plugin, you know, update properly? Um, and sure the hosts have gotten really good, you know, so they're backing things up. The hosts are vetting some plugins. I I use WP engine used to use WP engine. Um, (laughs) and they would like send me a notice. Hey, one of your plugins on your site has been spotted for a security vulnerability. We've deactivated it. Cool. You know, so like the, the hosts are getting good. I don't think WordPress is going anywhere. One of the places I do think WordPress will go and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second here is I think like, and this happened in 2016, WordPress will become the back end for lots of front ends as a service. You know, like the WordPress has a good REST API. WordPress handles content really well. I see a lot of people feeding WordPress CMSs that are already legacy systems set up, established, et cetera, feeding those into other sources, right? Getting that data out of WordPress and feeding other systems with that. I think that's where a lot of the excitement is in WordPress right now. Um, but we can talk about that. Go ahead, Joe. There'll be something really interesting happen when that web flow number gets to the two, three, four percent. We made a comment earlier about how there'll be competitors. There will be competitors, but there'll also be integration solutions for the products that already exist, Mm -hmm. like the Shopify, Mm -hmm. like the WordPress. So WordPress though the the plugin developers don't really focus on webflow they're not looking at it it's not big enough but when it does become big enough we're going to see a massive increase in wordpress plugins Mm -hmm. yes we'll have the webflow plugins in the webflow marketplace but everyone else is going to start making plugins too because now it's at two three or four percent right that will be interesting too it will also make webflow make wordpress a little bit stronger for people that want the webflow type capabilities. Yeah. So, yeah, that'll be interesting to watch as well. Yeah, I think there's I think there's going to be so much competition in this space. 
right here. Um, that's when it gets right here. Who's saying it? Rahul. That's when it'll get exciting as competition benefits the users the most. Because that's when, yeah, like you won't have time to wait around for three years for a product release. You know, like you got to gotta get to it. Um, and I think that's what you see people ramping up for. I think that's why, you know, Webflow wants to stock the war chest. I think that's why they're okay taking a lot of this money is so that they know that they can go build these things, um, you know, without having to worry about the, the runway disappearing. Um, Nick brings up a good comment here, Joe. I still find it hard to believe that Webflow is such a, a low percentage. Crazy. Do you have thoughts about that as you see that, as you see uh, that chart and how like disparate it is between, you know, really there's one player at the top. It's WordPress. Yeah. You know, and then after that, it's these small single digit percentages and nobody, only one other company gets above 2%, right? So it's like Shopify, Wix, Squarespace, and then everything else is just per, like getting there. And I do think I would not be surprised if in a year or two, Webflow is up here in the three, four, five percent. I really mm -hmm. would not be surprised if, if in, if this chart, you take a, th you know, you put a three or a four on here, maybe a five. And you see a four or five percent to eight percent up here, you know, like you see a lot of that. And then maybe this number is down into the thirties again. So I, I don't know. We're just guessing here again, pure speculation. Um, but I, I, I don't find it that hard to believe, Nick, you know, as somebody who's kind of been following this space. And I, we make these jokes all the time about there being ecosystems inside of WordPress that are bigger than Webflow. Like WP Engine, for instance, as a host of websites has I like I don't know magnitudes more websites than than I think Webflows. You know that doesn't mean they drive more page views. That doesn't mean it's a bigger product. But as a sheer scale of number of websites it supports, um, it's it's interesting. Yeah, that 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 it's that small. I also feel the numbers a bit small, and I think we feel it's bigger because the community is mm -hmm. so electric. Mm -hmm. We're right here in the community. We hear people loving Webflow passionate about Webflow, changing their life with Webflow. So all those surroundings make us think, wow, so many people are using Webflow. But in reality, we see that low percentage. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sam's got a good point here, Joe, if you want to take this one. Sam says, I feel Webflow's true growth will be when more agencies choose Webflow over WordPress. Wix attracts casuals or do-it-yourself users, whereas Webflow is too difficult for casuals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Once those agencies start offering the service, then when the companies come to the agencies, the agencies say, oh, we're using this new platform, Webflow. It's the best. Right. And now that company uses Webflow and they are Webflow users as a company. Yeah. So the agencies can really spread this very, very well. Well, and it also starts to spread internally as you hit these enterprise level clients and as you have these little breakout moments where um, you get people on teams that just like start building and tinkering with them. They're like, hey, why are we not using this? And then they got to go rack their head against their company WordPress site for a year or two or five. And they're like, yo, you know, have you guys seen this? I I've seen this all the time. I I, I I'm still in the process of flipping my personal WordPress site. I know companies who have big, big, big WordPress installations who they will probably never invest the money to move to Webflow until like that infrastructure just doesn't support it anymore. That's why um, like businesses still operate on like MS DOS prompt computers. I'm not lying. You can walk into places and see this shit. Okay. Like legacy architecture is just probably going to hang around for a long time. What we're seeing is a whole new layer built on top of that. And that whole new layer to build is accessible to different folks, you know, non-technical folks. And so I think that layer will be built faster. I think that layer will be built with tools more like Webflow and some of these no-code tools that we're seeing now versus these previous tools. And I, that's where I wonder. I wonder how this growth accelerates over another year, over another two, three, four years. So, um, and I agree with Sam here saying that Wix is... For casual users, Webflow is way too difficult for casual users. But that's where we talked about that front end as a service last week, where us as technical Webflow users will build tools and front ends and themes and component marketplaces and things that will allow non-technical users to approach uh, Webflow, much like people approach WordPress now. Most people who play with WordPress are not developers, they're theme stylers. They're very comfortable building themes with an Oxygen, with a Elementor, with a, a Veda or a Divi or a whatever, whatever page builder. So, yeah, Joe, any 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 continuation thoughts there or you see any other comments coming in that we need to jump to? 
I see a cool comment from Shay Lewis. Yep. And Shay says, with the latest updates within Figma, do you see them becoming a competitor to Webflow mm. in the next three to five years? And development not rely so much on front end needs, but instead deving integrations. And then Shay says, they just added absolute positioning. Looks like they're slowly moving this way over the past couple of years. This is an interesting comment here. The idea that you can design something in Figma, it's already generate, generating some CSS when you are creating things in Figma. And now imagine that becoming a live website. Mm -hmm. It's a big ask. That's a big project. This is not something they can just turn on overnight. But Shay's right with the movement to absolute positioning with what we see around auto layouts. This could be a very, very interesting play for Figma. So yeah, yeah Shay, I don't know. Uh, I could see it happening. Absolutely. I could see it happening, but I also see them running into the same restrictions over time that their platform is built to be a, a static design generation tool that's slowly being updated for the modularity. Um, and so I even heard uh, recently somebody talking about auto layouts cool, but I think it was um, Josh Fry or something, but talking about once he hits a certain level of prototyping or designing, he moves, he wants to move into Webflow from Figma because of the dexterity it gives, you know, because you just can't do some of those things. So I don't know, it would be interesting to see if in a couple years Figma is competing. I, I'm not naive enough to think Webflow is going to be alone in the space. Somebody's going to come out of the woodwork that we're not thinking of and at least be competitive. They may not have full feature parity. They may not, you know, give you everything that Webflow gives you, but there are probably going to be products that pop up along the way that are like, oh, that's interesting. This is cool. We should keep an eye on that kind of stuff. And three to five years is a long time. That's a long time. His in first space. comment, yeah, you could do anything in three to five years. Yeah. Um, Joe, this is a question just for you. What would need to happen for you to move away from Webflow in the future? Well, I don't know. That's a tough one. <laughs> I, I yeah. guess, I guess number one would be if clients started to hate it. If for some reason all of our clients started to really dislike Webflow, mm. and there were not new leads coming into Webflow, that's when I would think, hey, we have to make a change here. I can't see that happening. Webflow would really have to mess up for that to happen. Yeah. Uh, if the if the product just completely breaks. Yeah. That's where people can go unhappy. But I don't see that happening ever. That's like, I just I can't really imagine FinSuite moving away from Webflow. I, it just doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. Yeah, I think as long as Webflow is a viable product, and I think they're going to be viable for a long time to come, adding functionality, I don't I don't know. I don't I don't see that as a, um, a, a real thing that. Yeah, I don't know. That's a hard hypothetical uh, for all the reasons Joe said and more. Uh, Brianna is saying, how do other communities compare to Webflows? This is a huge reason I use Webflow over others. This is the reason why Webflow is going to win the dance. First of all, they have an amazing product. Yes, of course. But the reason they have such a powerful community, community I think, is, first of all, it's because the product is so amazing. But second of all, because so many people are now seeing the opportunities that this gives them to use their creative skill set to advance their professional goals or their career or to monetize their creativity, intellectually, online, whatever it is. Um, and that becomes intoxicating to share. So Brianna, I don't think anybody else has a community like this. Uh, Joe, thoughts? I don't like who else in the space has a community like this? Um, Apple, Tesla, um, you know, like WordPress, you know, like WordPress won against Joomla, Drupal, all the other ones, I think because of their community. So the WordPress community is also very tight. But Joe, any any thoughts there on community and and We've, we've had full episodes on how that's the secret uh, weapon here at Webflow, I think. Yeah, I, and I wouldn't even compare something like an Apple, Apple or Tesla community to a Webflow community. Mm. Maybe it's larger in size, but I can't imagine that it's more deep in passion. And that's because people's lives don't change from using Apple. Mm. Maybe your life can improve. You love your phone. You love your computer. You love how it works. It makes you happy when you work but you're not making a fundamental life change by being an Apple user. It's mm. not a significant change. Same with Tesla. Yeah. You could be happy driving your car, but your, your life isn't making a 360 with a new car. 
Webflow, on the other hand, you can do that. You can start using Webflow and actually change your entire life. You can go from having nothing to having something very, very viable and scalable for your professional and personal life. So that's why this is such a special community. And I really cannot relate it to these other massive communities that are powerful yeah. because it's a whole different level. Uh, so, yeah, I think Webflow's community is the reason it's going to just yeah. skyrocket. There's no there's no way to stop it. That's a good point, Joe. I think um, in my mind, I was relating the communities in um, just like the raving fanaticism for the product, you know, but I think the point you made, it could actually like that's one level further, you know, like that's like that another dimension. So imagine if a Tesla or Apple fans were like, imagine if you were making money because you went and bought an iPhone and because you were using this cool, the coolest product in the space, not only were you just cool because you had this thing, you were able to like subsist. You were able to support your family. You were able to send your kid to college or whatever it is, you know, pay for your own way through college or buy your mom a car, buy yourself a car. I don't know. Lots of things. So yeah, that's like a, I don't know how you quantify that. I do think that's a hundred percent the secret weapon in this space. Yeah. Um, let's see. The like count just jumped after the air horn. We're still over 120. Let's try it again. Does it work again? <laughs> All right. We're at 60 likes. Nice. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> Jacob. Uh, let's see here. He played with Framer. It's so far behind the flexibility SEO. Good marketing hype for now, but a long way to go. Right. I, I see this in a lot of these products. I think, Joe, do, do you, I think like, uh, yeah, the hype machines easy to get going online, but yeah. And it, imagine what Webflow was in the beginning of Webflow. If you use Webflow early in the, the start of Webflow, it's not like it is now. The workflow just wasn't as good. I actually jumped into an old build just yesterday that used IX1. Mm. And wow, I just clicked through that and I said, this is, it's a completely different experience with a completely different toolkit. So imagine a company tries to copy Webflow, they're kind of starting from the beginning. You know, you can't just copy exactly what Webflow is and say I'm Webflow. You got to start, you know, do your own thing and you start from the beginning. Webflow has been doing this. They were pioneers in this type of web builder since it launched. So they have a lot more time to have created this really, really well-defined platform. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Oscar's got a, a comment here. It says, I read an article regarding Squarespace and Wix saying that only one to 3% of websites are ever published. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. I'd also venture to guess that Webflow, and maybe this is why they don't count on this platform, is because they're all on the .io links. I bet Webflow has hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of Webflow.io domains, clonable sites, things like that, that maybe don't get counted in the space. So I don't know that that's interesting to know whether this chart here that we were looking at counts the Webflow.io domains. Or is this just self-hosted web Webflow installs, or not self-hosted, but like um, paid-hosted sites? I would I would have to think it's the Webflow.io links as well. You think it's all of them? It yeah. seems like it'd be a lot, right? Maybe I don't know. That'd be interesting. Webflow, yeah. Give us know. your stats. Show us your insides. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's compare numbers yeah. here. <laughs> Come on, let's. You show us yours. We'll show you ours. <laughs> you show us, yeah, yours. We'll show you ours. <laughs> Uh, okay. Um, I feel, Raul, <laughs> I feel like WordPress is going to be the new Internet Explorer so big that it sticks for users, but also Internet Explorer. Uh, maybe there's a follow up socks. I don't, yeah. I don't know what the finish there was. Um, this is a good question, Joe, uh, from Vladimir. On which target groups should Webflow focus their marketing to come to that 4%? That is a nice question. Mm -hmm. I would say targeting agencies and targeting large companies. I think when people see large companies go somewhere and do something, they will naturally follow. So saying Webflow saying, hey, we have uh, Intuit as our client. Now somebody that's in the financial space goes, wow, Intuit uses Webflow? We should use Webflow. Mm. It's for it's for us. It's for small, medium businesses. 
and Intuit's able to use it. That's a big selling point for me as somebody who respects Intuit as a brand. So that's going to convert a lot of individuals. It's a really good testimonial to have those big clients. Yeah. And then the agencies, we talked about this, having that one agency that has 120 active sites, migrating all of those from WordPress to Webflow, that is also going to increase the numbers. So that's where I would would focus the the resources. Yeah, yeah, and that's um, doing a little bit of that, you know, the Intuit thing, it's like, it's called the Jones effect. So tying this back to some gross stuff, we'll tie a little bit of sales in here. Anytime you can, um, you know, keeping up with the Jones, have you ever heard the phrase keeping up with the Jones? Um, well, lots of people like to keep up with the Jones. They like to have, <coughs> excuse me, they like to have the nicest stuff. They have, like to have, this is why the Tesla Colts, this is why the Apple Colts, et cetera, right? Um, but businesses like this too, and, and technologists like this too, and this is where Webflow can play in. And so, yeah, if you get people thinking, hey, you're not on the fastest thing, you're not on the most performant thing, you're not on the most efficient thing for your uh, marketing team, those can be you know tools to help you sell and get to this 4%. I also really think targeting the designers, targeting the creative folks that are over on WordPress right now, styling themes. Find me five years ago and show me how like Webflow changes everything and makes it faster for me to build what I'm trying to build, trying to toggle Elementor or this Divi theme or Enfold theme or whatever theme I'm using in that moment. Find me, right? And show me how I can bind data in the CMS beautifully using this designer. Show me how that all I have to learn is the box model and I can create whatever layout I want instead of having to figure out how do I add a sidebar here that opens and closes without the theme having that functionality built in, right? That's where I think, you know, you, you want to go look, where do they get that 4%? They come and steal it from this guy's right here, you know? <laughs> That's yeah. it. Yeah, totally. That's... And that's where that's where we want that percentage to come from. We want to convert these types of, of users, these types of people, because we see it working. We see a lot of people coming to, to Webflow and saying, hey, I worked with WordPress for this many years. I just came across Webflow and I love it. I'm making the change. Yeah. We hear this. It's working. We rarely hear somebody say, I'm coming from WordPress and I tried Webflow, but I'm going back to WordPress. Doesn't happen as often. Yeah. So yeah, we know it works. Not only that, but then those people become the evangelists that start a meetup and tell more people about it, right? That's how, that's how, that's where I started. Aviv is saying, that's the only reason I'm where I am, Webflow community, all the time. Zach Wajazia made some serious friends in this community in less than a year. I was in Vegas uh, a few months ago and I hung out with Zach, you know, Zach hosts us in the office. Like I meet people in this community as often as possible when I travel, you know, Joe and I stumbled into each other in San Francisco after meeting online a couple of times. And here we are doing business things together two years later. This is going to keep happening. Like there's somebody who's going to meet today or tomorrow or next week that in six months from now, a year from now, two years from now, we'll be doing the things that we're all watching and thinking like, damn, Joe, why didn't we think of that? <laughs> you know, well, because we're focused on what we're doing and somebody else is looking out for the holes and they're going to find something interesting and they're going to do that. And maybe it's you. Right. That's why we always encourage everyone in this audience to start finding a place that you can explore, because when you do look at those charts, you know, when you look at this potential for growth and you see that Webflow, where is it right here, is at 0.6 percent of this market. And there's so much market up here. This is Blockbuster, y'all. This is Blackberry right here. And we're driving the iPhone. Look at how much room there is to grow. If you walk away from this episode with anything other than like opportunity in your eyeballs of thinking about where the growth of this is going to be is webflow the right solution let's take it back to the title for your next web design project yes and if it's not it's because you don't understand webflow right or you're trying to do something a little complex you're trying to do some of the e-commerce stuff you're trying to do some of the user login stuff that we talked about at the beginning so um i don't know off the soapbox now joe any, any thoughts there? <laughs> there's more comments there's so many comments i feel like we haven't even touched the comments yet yeah, there's a lot of comments. Um, WordPress started in 2003, Webflow in 2013. So with time, Webflow will get more and more market share. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. 2003, so that means that percentage has been building for much, much longer. Mm -hmm. So yes, it's growing and growing, but it 
it has this really strong base that it started with that right. Webflow has not started with. Right. So yeah, a very important stat there. Yeah. And this, this is a good point, Maria. I feel like I know most of the pros of Webflow. So how big can the community be? <laughs> I think we're going to find out that it's way bigger than we think. I, I think that we're the tip of the iceberg of the Webflow users. I think the majority of people um, are probably not this big in the fan group. You know, Maria, I see you at all the different events. I see you super connected with people on different platforms and stuff. And I think most of us who are on the stream are probably in that realm where we're looking to connect with more folks. But I'd be willing to bet that most people who are in this are not as active in the community. They're not as, you know, we're the 15, 20% of the community that's just everywhere. So I don't know. I think more of this will spark up. More people will kind of come out. I, I, I bet we'll start seeing some more. Who knows who's building with Webflow and we don't even know it yet, you know, because they haven't presented themselves as such or because they haven't come out and said, hey, I'm, you know, doing X, Y, or Z inside of Webflow. Uh, let's see. Shah, Shahriar. I don't know. I'm probably sorry if I butchered that. Do you think that Webflow will remove its code export feature in the future? I don't imagine why they would. Um, it's part of the pro, uh, plans It's part of the pay tiers. I, I don't know how that, why they would get rid of that. Um, that wouldn't make any sense to me for them to do that. Uh, Joe did drop off here, so we'll see if we get him back in just a second. Let's see. I'll keep reading comments and stuff until he gets back. Sam is saying, uh, why code is an interesting one to watch. Let me see, is see here. Cool. Why code is an interesting one to watch. Um, yeah, I think that's another kind of in the framer space. It's another no code visual drag and drop builder, but, um, not real sure. Again, I, yeah, haven't played with it too much. So don't know much to speak about that. Joe, any thoughts there? Nope. I, I don't know it either. Yeah. Uh, Fatema, I see you asking these questions in here. We don't offer support on the streams. Uh, sorry, you can uh, become a pro or jump into the Slack and maybe we can get somebody from the community to offer some support there. And Elisa is saying, I just designed right in Webflow, too lazy to prototype in Figma. I'm not sure this is the best way, but I do this myself sometimes. <laughs> Tomas, hey, hey, finally made it to the live hey, event. Hey. Nice, welcome. Welcome. This is a good point here, Joe. You want to take this one? Because we're all in with Webflow, if the rug was pulled from under us, it would be a disaster. Yes, of course it would. Yeah. Yep. I don't, I, I this, th yeah, I think about this probably uh, a, more than, than should be, but I'm knowing as much as I do about Vlad, knowing and having had some conversations intimately with folks in leadership at Webflow, having asked this question in person, like at, in San Francisco, like I remember sitting with Vlad asking like, Hey, what happens if you all, you know, pull the rug on us? Um, I don't think this is coming. Will they always make decisions that we agree with? Probably not. You know, um, will they keep developing a great platform? Probably, you know, will we keep building websites on it? Absolutely. Um, so I don't know. It's one of those things where private companies, um, that's always a concern. They've got enough runway where I don't think running out of money will be a problem. If Webflow falls apart, it's going to be because of complete lack of like some, something major happened from the inside out to rip that thing apart. It's not going to be money. It's not going to be the community. It's not gonna be the product. Like, yeah. Um, which is highly unlikely. Right. Yeah. I think I actually never think about this. Reimar says he, he thinks about this. A little bit more than than you should me i never think about it it's just not a thought in my mind i'll tell um, i i think if you think about that too much it kind of limits you from going all in on it yeah so if you believe in the company i like the idea of going all in on it yeah let me tell you what what i think about is not necessarily um the platform getting rug pulled what i have questions about is what happens 10 years from now when Vlad has to be making decisions like Jack Dorsey's making right now about who can publish on their platform and what is speech and what is this and what is that. And it's not an open platform, you know, it's, it's a closed platform and they have right to uh, some of that stuff, but that's, that's where I get lost. Right. If, if I'm thinking about any of that stuff, that's, you know, the rug pulling would be, could there ever be an instance where some of that stuff happens, right? Where, you know, certain people are just not allowed to publish on Webflow for whatever reason, or you could get banned. That, that's the kind of stuff. So I think it's way larger scale. Webflow's not in that 
place right now. Um, but yeah, that that's if, if I have any concern, it's it's on on that. Um, you know, obviously the open source nature of the platform versus closed. We'll see. I don't really see that as a concern, but yeah, when I do have concerns, it's around that. The Marine from Texas, Joe. I also wonder if pricing becomes a problem for Webflow growth. Oftentimes there are clients and Webflow users who complain the amount of money they spend in comparison to other platforms. You know what? I think this is a temporary thing. I think as people, we become more comfortable paying for things when they become more valuable to us. And I'll use the cell phone as an example. If you went back to when the cell phone was released mm -hmm. and you came to the prices that are being charged for iPhones today, you would look at it and go, no way. This is not a personal device, right? Remember the little flip phones, the press two, the, all these old phones, they were like $50, a hundred dollars for a new phone, maybe $200 if it was the coolest phone ever. And now you go in the iPhone, the new iPhone is, $1,400 or some wild thing. We have found more value in the phones. We use the phones more. They're a more important part of our life. So this is actually not a lot of money now, right? We would never, we would never think twice about, you know, having the best phone experience that we can afford for ourselves. So the same thing can happen with websites here where we're looking at Webflow saying, this is actually a little expensive for my business here. Look at all these other options. But actually when the website becomes so much more valuable to that business, I think we'll look back on these prices and say, these are fair prices. And I'm actually okay paying way more than this. Right. Uh, this happened at FinSuite, right? We, we, were, we wanted to pay a certain amount for the website. Now websites are so important to us. They're a big part of our business. So we'll pay a lot more for it. And I think businesses are going to find more value in their websites as the years pass. In yeah. five years, websites are going to be way more valuable than they are today. One million percent. The other thing that you have to also, which is kind of on the flip side of what you're saying in early emerging market, Joe, like think about flat screen TVs and how much a flat screen TV was when they first came out too. They were tens of thousands of dollars. And now you can go get all sorts of flat screen TVs for maybe a couple hundred bucks. You know, I think I saw like a 40 inch plus whatever for like 200, 300 bucks or whatever. And so we're also at the beginning where these emerging technologies may seem a little more expensive because they're new, because these companies are investing a lot of tech to build them because they have to recover some of their costs. And maybe some of those costs will also decrease as those populars. Like if, if there's three competitors for Webflow, well now Webflow has to be a little more price conscious than if Webflow is the only Webflow, right? And so right. Um, I, I expect these things, just like in any normal market, to normalize over time. And so like Joe said, the costs will become relative. You know, when I, when I first saw HubSpot pricing at hundreds of dollars a month, I'm like, holy cow. But I know businesses who pay thousands of dollars a month gladly and don't even care because it's an integral part of their money making machine that's tied to the internet and they see the value from that. So I think, you know, the, the price is uh, arbitrary if you're using this in a meaningful way to, you know, if you're just tinkering, okay, the price is expensive, right? Because now you got to pay that out of your pocket. But if you're using this to build business assets for tools, et cetera, um, and knowing what I know about Webflow and Vlad specifically, I would, um, I think that they'll also work to make it continue to be more accessible for everyone as, as we go forward. Let's bring up a comment recent from Tom Owen. Mm -hmm. Pricing never gets mentioned with Shopify. People seem to view e-commerce as an investment, but not standard websites. Yet both should be generating income in some form. This is a great point. People that have e-commerce stores are willing to pay so much more for their website because it is such a core part of their business, of their life. So if I'm making money direct from the website, I'll put a lot of money into it. So if we keep, if we keep building experiences that earn people money directly, they're going to care more and more and more about it. Hmm. A lot of businesses still have a website just because they have a website and they need a website. There are a lot of businesses in that category, but we're seeing that all the new businesses that start have website as a primary focus. Yeah. 
So you're either old and you update your website to make it a primary focus or you die. Yeah. And all the new businesses come in that care about the web and care about tech. So yeah, you, it really depends on how important it is to your business. Well, and making money on the internet is a new thing, you know, yes. like very new. COVID accelerated it tremendously. But if you looked at like online digital commerce as much as like four years ago, three, four years ago, as a percentage of total sales, it's like a microscopic percentage. It's like seven, eight, maybe 9% of total sales was happening online. Now, I don't know how those numbers have adjusted over COVID. Maybe that's 20%, let's say, or, but it's not like big percentages. And when you ask people, they're like, oh yeah, it's 70, 80% online. No, it's not right. Like the perceptions, just like we thought maybe like if we should ask people at the beginning of the episode, how big they thought Webflow was as a percentage of the CMS market, I guarantee nobody would have said 0.6%, you know? Um, and so, yeah, it's one of those things where like, we are just starting to see the scale and just starting to understand how this is all going to form around. Um, and I think this is funny cause I thought this wasn't going to be as exciting an episode, but I think we could go for like another half hour on this Joe. <laughs> um, Let's see. There's so many. Oh, there's so many comments that we haven't. There's a lot of comments. I got lost in the comments. I know. Good. Luckily, my system marks them once I've clicked them. Mm -hmm. I should give you the same plugin, Joe, and maybe you don't use them for the system, but at least you could like <laughs> maybe yeah. see. see I have. wish there was a way for me to shoot which ones I've which ones we've seen. So, um, let's see. I Tommy Gunn saying thoughts on Oxygen Builder. We did an episode where we dove into Oxygen and Elementor and got in it. It's just, I mean, it's close. Uh, I don't know if that's Leco saying or Iaco. Restro saying uh, WordPress plus oxygen is like Webflow on steroids. I, I disagree. I disagree. Again, unless you're building e-commerce or you need something out of the box that WordPress has that Webflow doesn't. Authentication, you know, some kind of admin or, or like uh, admin controls in the back end or... I don't know. I don't know what, like I challenge you, like what, what site would you build that we couldn't build in, in Webflow? You know, if you think that's the case, like who's out there in, in WordPress right now, come see us. Like, we'd love to do it. We'll stream it. We'll stream the build all side by side. Like, I, like, let's see it. I'm down. If you think that's what it is. Uh, Sam Harrison has some great tutorials on oxygen. Nice. Okay. <laughs> Aviv. Shout out to all the forum heroes from back in the days, Vincent, Matt, Alex, Peter, Jeff, Sarah. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them are still today, you know, doing all that. So, you know, go ahead. I forgot his name. I was going to shout out somebody that I loved, uh, as a, as a forum moderator and I forgot his name. Sam, Samuel. Hmm. Anybody knows Samuel's name? I don't. JavaScript person. He <laughs> was he was so helpful to me. Yeah, just a random thought. Sorry. Yep. Uh, let's see. I just noticed my Webflow streaming notification on scroll. That's right. Don't forget it. If you're in the <laughs> FinSuite extension, there's uh, stream notifications at the bottom there. So we have those queued up. Let's see. Webflow needs to have the same positioning as Adobe. Studio 120 says, speaking to agencies, freelancers, designers. It's happening. It's happening. I hear all the time somebody saying they're speaking at a university or uh, I saw Grace Walker the other day is uh, working with agencies to try to figure out how to consult them on how they can make the transition to Webflow. Um, that's where I think I, we see stuff and we think like, oh, we see what's happening. You don't see everything, you know, like not everyone operating in this space is doing so publicly. And so, yeah, beware. There's lots of things happening below the surface that we don't know about yet that you will pop up onto the surface in the next, um, you know, six months, year, two years, whatever. And we'll be like, oh, look, where do these guys come from? And they've been operating just real quietly for a while now. I remember at the first no code conference, actually, I won't tell you which agency because they might be watching. Um, I was talking to one of the principals at their agency and we were talking specifically about Webflow. And he said that he was gatekeeping Webflow because it was his secret weapon as an agency. And they didn't want to tell other agencies how to do this because other agencies thought they were building custom coded sites and these beautiful, crazy sites. Um, but they were using Webflow. Uh, and so I think the secret's out of the bag. The cat's out of the bag on that. 
Um, not a lot of people are able to keep Webflow a secret right now in that regard. Um, and I don't think we should be gatekeeping anyway like that, but just, um, just showing a change in the landscape. And I'll keep an eye on Slack and see if Joe pops in, but we have lost Joe again. Targeting the rest of the world, Mike is saying, so there's a huge market outside the US, a little more effort towards making the product more compliant, GDPR could go a really long way. I think we'll see leaps and bounds on this stuff soon. I know they're working on this. Um, I think they even mentioned something in the last quarterly update from Vlad. Um, yeah, I, I think a lot of the stuff we're waiting for will kind of unlock quickly and all at once, I do believe. Um, North Coast is saying large companies are difficult for Webflow to target as they usually have a bunch of bespoke requirements, features, which is where Webflow falls short. Hopefully Logic will break some of those boundaries. That's not necessarily true. I hear what you're saying, but we overcome those limitations all the time here at FinSuite. This is where we've cut our teeth. This is why the products that we've built exist uh, because we've solved a lot of these problems and figured out how to bring those to scale and then turn those into products that we can then distribute to the com uh, community. So, um, yeah, I hear what you're saying, but I'm not sure that's a super strong limitation that won't be lifted as we go. Uh, Karipos, Webflow is great, but you will always be limited because it's not open source. We did an episode on this. We did a full episode on whether Webflow, you should be using Webflow or WordPress because it's open source one way or another. Um, I think that's an interesting episode to go into. Um, Webflow is scared from oxygen. I don't think so. Um, and also these other platforms may feel open source, but if you're not a technically savvy software developer, they're not open source to you. You still need to rely on a plugin. You still need to rely on somebody's interface. You still need to rely on somebody else's servers. You still have to pay a monthly fee to use this service. Otherwise it's no good to you. And so a lot of people make this argument that, oh, it's open source. So it's better. Okay. Maybe if you have the technical chops to manage that and maintain that as part of your skill set, uh, otherwise you're just as dependent on these tools as anybody else is. And so open source may as well just be as arbitrary a term as, you know, anything else. So I hear you, I get it. If you want to stand up your own servers, if you have the technical chops to do X, Y, or Z, you can go do that. But for most people, um, you know, those are not necessarily, uh, legitimate concerns that can be overcome without them learning a crazy amount of technical stuff. Okay. <laughs> Figma's not becoming Webflow anytime soon, but 200 characters is not enough to explain it. Um, open source comes with its sound size too. Exactly. We did a whole episode on this, so we, we were not going to dive back into that. Vincent's saying, where is Sam? Yeah, funny. Uh, okay. The rain from Texas. E-commerce sales in 2021 accounted for 13.2% of total sales. This is e-commerce as total sales. What I'm talking about though, so this is a small percentage as it relates to total sales. The number I was talking about is online sales as it relates to total GDP or total commerce. So not just total sales, like total retail sales as a percentage, e-commerce is gonna be as a higher percentage. But when you're talking about like, people are not buying houses online yet. People are not buying, you know, legal contracts online yet. People are not making big trends. Like you're not gonna go buy a washer and dryer. Well, maybe you will buy a washer and dryer online and have it shipped to your house now. You know, things like that are just now starting to take place, right? But there's a lot of things that you still need to rely on face-to-face, -face, real relationships, all that stuff eventually soon will be coming online. And so that's where I say, so even here, 13.2% of total sales, I would imagine that's like retail sales. I doubt that includes total output. Let's see, Michael Atkinson is saying, the USP for me is that you don't have the PHP update plugin, updates, everything's still working, security headaches you have in WordPress, yeah. Yeah, the update stuff's a big deal. Um, and I think that's going to continue to draw people to uh, Webflow. So uh, we're well over time here and Joe's still floating out in the ether. So I'm not sure what's up with his internet. Uh, so I'll go ahead and wrap this up with just the last couple comments here. Felix is saying, just became an effing pro, finished the big projects and attributes, was a huge help. Happy to officially join the effing sweet community. That's where it is. We appreciate you. Uh, thanks, Felix. Um, we'll see you on the Slack. And if you are one of the pros, remember tomorrow we have a hangout. Um, Check your email and the calendar for instructions on that. Yeah, Maria's saying, I was thinking about the size of the community as a good thing. We're still considered early adopters. In my book, it's awesome. A thousand percent, we're way ahead of the adoption curve. One of the things we were going to talk about that we didn't get to, um, 
because these, these things are becoming so dynamic, the conversations, we don't even get to stip, uh, stick to the script, but uh, we're so far of the uh, ahead of this curve that it can either be good or bad, right? We could have all our eggs in one basket, and we've talked about this at the beginning that, you know, we're all in on Webflow, uh, but what does that mean as we go? You know, this could be good, this could be bad, we think it's good, we've talked about that for a number of reasons, there's lots of episodes for why we believe that, but um, what's it? Joe is where? Got it. Let me see if I refresh my side and bring him in here. There he is. Hey, Joe. No. Hello, Joe. Hello. Okay. We've got Joe back. Hello, Joe. Nice. Great. I get to say goodbye, every, everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was I was in there, but good. I like watching. I like watching. Rymar speak. Maybe we'll just cancel me out for all Tuesdays and it could just be Rymar. Don't do that because I feel like I'm just floating in the ether. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I don't have, like, sometimes I like to just be able to, like, pull off and just, um, yeah, that's weird that it didn't refresh on my end, too. I wonder what happened there. So, okay, uh, Joe, any final thoughts? Anything uh, while you're sitting back uh, in, in the internet ether that sparked your mind that you need to share with the folks before we get out of here? No, great, great talk. We'll see everybody for Thursday. We're going to be doing something more hands-on on Thursday, but also still casual. We see an increase in our our viewer count and the amount of people that stay watching when we just have these casual conversations, when we, integr when we interact with your comments. So yeah, definitely come by. We're talking all day. Do we know what we're talking about on Thursday? I don't we're not planned yet. I don't think we know yet. Planned. Oh, trivia next Thursday, though. Mm. Yo, y'all don't know about these updates that are coming to trivia. Big updates. Should we tell them a little bit? I mean, they have the, they have stuck it out. I see some. Well, should we tell them? No, no? let's wait. Ooh, okay. Come to the pro meeting tomorrow. Oh, yeah, you're right. If you are a pro, right. you, we're going to show you the updates. We, we heard a lot of the feedback from our first trivia Damn. at Global Open House. We implemented most of those updates. So we're going to give that preview tomorrow at the pro meeting. And then the next Thursday, we'll all play publicly together. Got it. That makes sense. Okay. Uh, Jacob says hit the horn again because we're still at 100. All right. So we'll end the episode at 100. This has been good. Honestly, yeah. I thought this was kind of, uh, I wasn't real confident about this episode until deep last night. I started finding some of these charts and started getting some of the some of the research. And I was like, oh, this would be good to talk about. So um, let us know in the comments what you would like to see us talk about next. We're always looking for ideas for these episodes. Um, we don't want to get super repetitive with any of this content. I know sometimes we're talking about the same issues. Uh, some of these topics come up. So, you know, there's always new people in the crowd. And so um, let us know what you'd like to, to hear us talking about. Leave that in the comments. We're always open to feedback from you all. Um, will the meeting be recorded? Yeah, I think we're going to start recording the pro only meetings because I think folks, um, not everyone will get to, to be there. So, yes, I, I will. Um, I'm going to try to, to record that. Yes. Okay, I think that's it. Cool. Um, thanks, everyone. We appreciate you all. If you're watching now or in the future, please uh, go give the episode a like. If you get any value from the work that we do here at FinSuite now or in the past or in the future, um, subscribe and make sure you turn on those notifications. That really does help us um, You know, send a good signal to YouTube. Other than that, Joe, any final thoughts? Are we out of here? That's it. Have a great day. Bye.